Looking for an easy, cost-effective solution to set up a CRM for your business while having complete control of your data structure and third-party integrations? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to achieve that using Airtable. Let's begin by setting up a companies table. The high level object in business CRMs is usually companies. So that will be the name of the first table I create and each record will represent a company that I'm either working with or prospecting. Then I'm going to add some fields that will include useful data I need to store for each company. For example, the name of the company. That's an important one. Then we have the description. So this could be a, a short summary of what the company does. And I'm actually gonna turn this into a, a long text field. Then we can have the company's website, which can be uh, of type URL. We can also have uh, a selector field uh, pointing out how they uh, heard about us. And this could have a few options. Google search, advertisement, referral, social media, and of course, any other fields that can contain useful information on the company level. Now I'm gonna do my magic and quickly populate this table with some sample data. And now we can move on to opportunities, which is usually the second most important object in a CRM. An opportunity represents a potential deal or project that you and your sales team is working on closing, and it is tied to a particular company. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new table for opportunities. And I'm gonna populate this table with relevant fields. So an opportunity should have a name, it should also have a description, which will be of type long text. It can also have a value. So uh, I'm gonna select currency for this. And obviously here you can select uh, your own currency. Uh, and I'm also gonna add a pipeline stage field, which will be of type single select. And this will help me indicate at which stage of the sales pipeline the opportunity is currently at. For this, I can have a few options such as uh, discovery, which is that you know initial initial stage where you're having that first call with the prospect and trying to gather gather some requirements and identify if they're a good fit. Uh, we have the demo slash pitch stage where uh, we're pitching our service or product and trying to get them interested. Uh, we have the proposal stage where we send that quote or invoice and. Uh, wait for their confirmation and payment. And of course we have the won and lost stages uh, which indicate whether the deal has been won or lost. Obviously you can completely customize this um, based on the stages that you have in your sales pipeline. Now what I will do next is actually link a company to an opportunity, right? I need to be able to select which opportunities are tied to which companies. And I'm gonna do that by creating a link to another record field on the company's table. This is something I personally like to call relations. Um, so I'm gonna call this opportunities. And the reason I'm using plural here is because a company can have multiple opportunities. Um, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna choose opportunities as the uh, as the type of record I want to link to, and I want to allow linking to multiple records, right? Multiple opportunities. So I'm gonna create this field, and at this point I don't need to add any lookup field, so I'm gonna skip this. And here now I can go and I can select an opportunity record. Now we don't have any data in the opportunities table, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some magic here and populate it with some data. There we go, and now if I go back to my companies table and once again go to opportunities, I can select which, um, which opportunities I wanna to link to which company. Now I can also do this the other way around, so I can first create the opportunity and then link it to a company. And currently, I think this is set to uh, link, uh, this is currently allowing me to link to multiple companies. So I'm actually gonna disable multiple record linking um, on this relation field because I only want one company to be linked to a particular opportunity. And I went ahead and quickly linked each opportunity to a company. 
I'm also gonna rename this field to company so it doesn't confuse me. And that is my opportunities table ready. Now, another thing I wanna be able to do is actually calculate the total revenue I was able to generate from one opportunities. And I wanna, I wanna calculate that on the company level. The way I'm gonna achieve that is by creating a new field called revenue. And this will be of type uh, rollup. And rollup allows you to retrieve fields from a related object. So in this case, I have a relation to the opportunities, uh, to the opportunities table, and I'm able to retrieve fields from that, from those related records. And the field I'm interested in is value, right? So that's the value of the opportunity. And what I want to do with that data is actually sum up. I want to sum up the values of the related opportunities. However, that will sum up the values whether the opportunity has been won or not. And I don't want that. I actually want to sum up the values of all the won opportunities. So what I'm going to do here is add a condition that the pipeline stage of the opportunity is won, right? It's equal to won. So that will only, only retrieve the opportunities that have been won. So in this case, uh, I think there's two opportunities that have been won, one for Magic Games and one for Red NFT. And as you can see, Red NFT has a total revenue of 1,500 and Magic Games has a total revenue of 3,500. Now, if I go ahead and let's say, um, make this a one deal as well. So this is also a deal uh, so this is also an opportunity uh, linked to Red NFT. The uh, total revenue of Red NFT went up to 2,500. So this is exactly what I wanted to achieve here. Another common thing that I see with uh, CRM software such as Pipedrive and uh, Close.io is that opportunities are presented in a Kanban view. Um, and they're grouped by pipeline stage. So this allows you to get like a visual representation of where your deals are currently in the in the in the pipe in the sales pipeline and um, it also makes it very easy you know to change the the deal stage without having to um, click on like selector fields like this so I just wanted to quickly point out that Airtable allows you to present uh, your data in different ways as you can see there's many different uh, view options here on the side. Another uh, view that I really like is actually grid combined with a group, right? So you can actually group your um, your records by, let's say, pipeline stage. So here you can still see all your records in a grid view, and this can be useful, especially if you have a lot of records, uh, but they're, they're grouped by, um, by stage. And there's actually also a useful feature here, which allows you to, let's say, sum up the value um, of each stage, right? So you can see the sum here, uh, and I really like that. And you can you can change this to display, let's say, uh, an average, or um, uh, let's say like a, a max or a range or a median. You know, it totally depends on what you're doing, but uh, that is also possible there. Another important element of a CRM is being able to create and store contact information. So even though we can have some uh, contact information stored on the company records, uh, you might be talking to several people from one company at the same time. Therefore, in order to store uh, the contact information of each one of those persons, um, you would need a contacts table. Now, on the context table, uh, we can add some relevant fields such as uh, name. So this will be the name of the person, and I'm going to change this to uh, full name. Uh, we can also have their phone number, and I'm going to select phone number as the field type here. Uh, of course, email is always important. Um, I'm going to select email as a field type. I'm also going to have role and I'm gonna select single line text for this. 
And I'm also gonna have a notes uh, field, which will be of type long text. And here I could have some quick notes such as uh, only contact this person for uh, technical questions, let's say. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and populate this uh, table with some sample data. There we go. And now I'm gonna use the same process I used earlier to uh, relate a company to one or more uh, contacts. So I'm gonna create a link to another record field here and this is gonna be called um, contacts. So link to another record, I'm gonna select the contacts table and I'm gonna allow linking to multiple records. Uh, I'm not gonna add a lookup field and here I can now start selecting which contacts I want to link to. I went ahead and quickly selected a few contacts for each company. And now if I go back to my contacts table, as you can see, uh, each contact is related to a company. Now, once again, I wanna change this to um, disable linking to multiple uh, records because uh, each uh, contact should only link to one company. Uh, obviously, if you have like contacts which are linked to two companies, which I think it's is not very common, uh, you can you can enable that feature, uh, like it's not gonna change anything, but um, for this example, I'm just gonna disable it. So there we have it, that's our context table ready. Now at this point, I think this CRM has all the important data objects. However, the amazing thing about Airtable is that you can use the same ideas I showed you so far to construct the CRM with your own data structure. There's no limits on how many tables and relations you can create. For the last part of this video, I want to briefly touch upon automations. Automations can be very useful in a CRM if you want to trigger external processes based on things such as record updates. You might want, for example, to send a congratulations email to your, uh, to your team when an opportunity is marked as one. Airtable makes uh, creating automations very easy. As you can see here, we have an automations tab and um, we can go ahead and create a custom automation. Now the first part to an automation is to actually select the trigger, right? So what is the thing that will trigger this automation? And as you can see, we have um, many different options here, but as an example, I'm gonna choose when record updated. So uh, here on the side, I can select which table I wanna monitor for record updates. Let's say I wanna monitor the opportunities table. Uh, and I, I want to um, choose the pipeline stage field, right? So I want to I want to monitor for changes for updates on that pipeline stage field of each record. Now, what I want to do next is actually select the action. So, what is the process that I want to trigger when a field gets updated? However, I'm not going to choose this because this will run an action. Uh, without any conditions. And I actually wanna define a condition. As you can see here, there is conditional actions. So I wanna, I wanna have a condition in this case. Um, and I wanna make sure that uh, pipeline stage is one, right? So I wanna have that condition before executing any actions because otherwise the actions would, uh, would run on any update that is made to that pipeline stage. So even if I change it from, let's say, discovery to uh, to demo and pitching or proposal, it will still trigger this automation. So I wanna define those conditions first. So here, what I'm gonna do now is select the action. And as you can see, there's different, different actions you can select, such as sending an email. Uh, so I can uh, construct an email that will be sent out to my team. Now, you're not uh, limited to one action. You can actually go ahead and add multiple actions here. And as you can see, uh, Airtable integrates with uh, multiple uh, like third-party services that you might be using as part of your business. Um, however, this is, a, a, is not a very large list, right? So if you want to extend your automation capabilities, I highly recommend uh, trying out make.com. So this is by far my favorite um, automations tool. And uh, Make makes it super, you know, easy to um, uh, create flexible automations and integrate with over 1,000, 1,500 different apps. So in this case, I have a scenario here where I'm monitoring for new, um, for new uh, 
uh, Airtable records that meet a particular condition, such as opportunities marked as one. And then I'm then triggering some processes here, uh, such as sending out an email, sending a Slack message, and also adding um, an email to a Facebook custom audience for retargeting. Like there's just so many to uh, so many things you can do. And please let me know in the comments below if uh, if you if you want me to make a video on um, Airtable CRM. Um, CRM automations using Make. Um, I can definitely, I can definitely help you with that. Just let me know what types of automations you would like to build. So that is the end of this video. I really hope you found it useful. What I'm gonna do in the description below, I'm actually gonna put a link to this uh, to this Airtable base so you can easily copy it and start using it. Uh, and with that said, if you found this video valuable, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.